Welcome back. This is lesson six of machine learning Zoom Camp session nine. And in this lesson, we will talk about creating a Lambda function. In the previous lesson, we prepared a Docker image and we tested it locally. And we were able to see that everything works fine. So now what we need to do is deploy this Docker container, Docker image that we created to Lambda. And if you remember, when we go to Lambda, and create a function here. In the second lesson, we used the author from scratch, but actually what we need is this one, container image. And here we need to select a container image. So we need to take the Docker image we prepared and publish it somewhere. And this somewhere, this place is called Amazon ECR. This is a place where we can publish Docker images. It's called Elastic Container Repository, I think. It's ECR, yeah, Elastic Container Registry. This is the place where we can publish all Docker images. And I don't have any repo, so I'll create one, but I will use command line for that. To do this, I'll use the AWS CLI utility. So if you don't have it, you can install it using AWS CLI like that. I already have it, so I don't need to install it here. I can do everything through this command line tool that I can do through the web interface. So let's create a container registry using the tool. For that, you do AWS ECR because we want to do something with ECR. And then the command we want to execute is create a repository. And then we need to specify repository name, which will be for our case, let's say clothing TF light images, for example. Apparently, I don't have it. You can install yes, CLA. Now, if you're doing it for the first time, you'll need to run LVS configure. I think I should have configuration here. So now I'll just run this one. This time it worked. And this is the response I get. The interesting part is this one. So this is the URI, the address of the repository we just created. I'll copy it because we'll need it. Just copy it here. You see, actually, the pattern is so first we have this is account ID, and this is the region, and this is the name of the registry. We can now refresh this page. We should be able to see it here. We have it here. It's empty. There's nothing. So now we actually want to publish the image we just created in the previous lesson, publish it here to this registry. To be able to do that, we actually first need to log to this registry before we can push there. Because this registry that we just created is closed. It's only open for us. So we need to log in. And for that, what we can do is we can again use our AWS CLI utility. And then there is a command. There is a command called get login. And then we also want to specify no include email. I'm not sure why we need this. I think if we don't do this, then it outputs email. And this is not something we want to use. So now I want to show you what this command outputs. But I don't want you to see the password. I don't know how sensitive it is. So what I want to do now is I want to redact the password. So you do not see it. You will just see a word password. And for that, I'll use a set utility. So this command will output something, including password. And I want now on the fly replace this password with something. For that, I will use set. So set is a command line utility in Linux that allows you to do different text manipulations, including uh, regular expressions. So this is exactly what I want to do here. So I want to run a regular expression. And here I have two parts. So here I have the actual expression and here what I want to replace with. So I want to actually replace my password with the word password. And here now I need to write an expression for my password. Password consists of digits, lowercase and capital case letters. It's encoded with base 64. So it has digits, letters, and it has equal characters. And that's it. And this password is at least 20 characters long. Now I need to escape this. Yeah, I hope it works. The output of this command is something I need to execute. And then I will be able to log into this registry with Docker. And then I'll be able to push to this registry. So this is the password that uh, this CLI tool generated. And actually what I want to do now is I want to take whatever this command returns and immediately execute it. For that, I use this index. So this thing here means whatever this command returns, just treat it as another bash command and execute it as well. 
And so it actually executed this command now and it gave some warning. But the important thing here is that we were able to successfully log in to this registry. Now we need to take this URL. Let me change it a little bit. I'll use variables here. The first one is account, then we have region, and then we have registry. This is the registry. So this will registry URL. And then what we also need is to have a tag for our particular image. So the tag we will have, so called remote tag or remote URI. This will be the URI for the image we're going to push to ECR. So it will consist of two parts. First, it's more like a prefix than URI. And then we have this notation. So first, this is the name of the image, which will be remote image. And then the tag for the tag, I will use clothing model v4, exception, exception v4. This will be the version of the model. And let's say this is the first version of our Lambda function. So this will be our tag. The final remote URI will consist of all these things. So now let me execute that. So now we can see what is actually in this remote URI. So this is the full URI of the image we're going to push now to ECR. So it consists of the URI of the registry and then the tag specific to the image we want to push now. What we will do now is, I don't remember the name of the image we created previously. So let me just do Docker images. Yeah, it's clothing model. So let me quickly check it. Docker run. It looks like what we run previously. So now what I want to do is take this image latest. So this is the latest one. So now I want to take this tag, this image with the URI we just created. For that I do Docker tag then the name we had just now, latest. And then I use this remote URI. So we tagged it and now what I can do is I can just do docker push and then the name of this tag. And then it will push to ECR to this particular location. So now it's pushing. I am actually doing this from an EC2 instance. So I hope it should be relatively fast. Okay, now we were able to push it successfully. Let's check it. So when I refresh it, I see it here. So this is the tag. So let's now use it for our Lambda function. So let's go to Lambda. For Lambda, we will not use the CLI. We'll just do it using the web console. We select this container image, then we give a name. Let's call it clothing classification. Then container image URI would be this thing. Let me do it one more time. Echo the remote URI. So this is this thing that we need to put here. Actually, instead of putting it, you can just click browse image and then we select here the ECR repo and then the image. So now we click select image. See it actually, instead of using a tag, it uses a digest of the image. It doesn't matter for us. And this is the same image. We can refer to it using tag or we can refer to it using the digest. And yeah, here we keep the this 64 architecture and we don't change anything else. So let's create it. First of all, we see that code preview is not available. So when we were experimenting with Lambda for the first time, we had the code preview. But here, because it's image-based, it's based on the container, we cannot see the code. Now it says you can invoke your function with a test event. So let's do that. Let's go to test and let's call it pens, the test event. Here we have URL. I think I have the URL somewhere here. This is our URL of pens. Now let's click test and it's executing this function. Probably now it will fail with an error. Let's see what the error is. And it says task timed out after three seconds. Three seconds is the default timeout, which is not sufficient for our case. To change the timeout, we need to go to configuration and then general configuration. And here we click edit and we need to increase timeout to 30 seconds. This should be sufficient for the first time when we run the function. It actually needs to get the image, it needs to initialize everything, so it needs some time to warm up. That's why we give it 30 seconds. And then we also need to give it more memory. Let's give it one gigabyte. 
don't, we don't need to, to change anything else. So just more memory and 30 seconds timeout. So let's save it. So now let's go to test again and test it. Maybe I forgot to save. Or it takes some time to actually apply the changes. Let's, let me try to test one more time. OK, now it's successful. So let's take a look. We see the output for pens. Again, this is the same output we had previously, but now it's coming from AWS Lambda, not from our local computer. And then we see the durations. It took seven seconds. Then it took some time to initialize the Lambda function. So in total, we paid for seven, like almost eight seconds. But when we run it one more time, so let me run it one more time, it should actually be faster. See, it's much faster. Now it took only two seconds, slightly more than two seconds. There were no init duration, so it only spent time actually executing the request because the function is already sort of warmed up. It did all the imports, it loaded the model, and it's there ready to serve requests. So if we test it one more time, it should also be fast. Usually the first invocation takes some time, but the consequent invocations, they are faster. So it takes two seconds. It's not super impressive, so it's not super fast, but it's also not so slow as well. Now we have our Lambda function that we deployed using AWS Lambda. Now it can be used by anyone, but we cannot yet use it as a web service. This is something we will look at in the next uh, lesson. First, let me check if I forgot to mention anything. Yeah, so the last thing I wanted to talk about is pricing. So you might be wondering how much it costs. Let's actually check that. Now we can go to Google or whatever favorite search engine you have, and then look for AWS Lambda pricing. The first result that they have is this one, it will slam the pricing. This is exactly what we need. So first I am doing this in Ireland. The price is different per region and we used 124 megabytes of, of RAM. So for that, for each millisecond, this is how much we pay. Let me take a note, price, this is for one, uh, one gig of RAM and it takes approximately two seconds to classify an image. So this is how much we pay. Let me quickly open Python and do a bit of calculation. This is how much we need to pay in dollars to classify one image. This is a very small amount. So let's see how much we need to pay to classify 10,000 images. So then for 10,000 images, we will need to pay 33 cents. Let's say for 1 million. For 1 million, we will need to pay $33. If we used more memory, actually there is some dependency between how much memory you give and the speed. So with half a gigabyte more memory, it would run faster. I'm curious about this ARM price. So let's see. It's actually cheaper. Let's see how much it would cost to, to classify 1 million images on ARM, provided that it runs. It also takes two seconds to classify an image. It would cost actually $6 less. It's probably worth trying this arm. I don't know if it's faster or slower. What are the advantages and disadvantages of that? But this is approximately the price. This is really good for experiments. Let's say you developed a model and now you want to test it. We will see how to do this with Kubernetes in the next session. But let's say you don't want to worry about Kubernetes and servers. You just want to experiment with your model. And Lambda gives you a really good way of doing this. It's really good for low traffic when you, let's say, don't have a lot of traffic. But imagine if you have to classify one 1 million images per day, then every day you'll need to pay 30 bucks. And if you multiply it by 30, so it's actually $1,000 per month, which is a significant sum of money per month per one model. Okay, I think we covered the price. Um, and that's it for this lesson. And what we will do next in the next lesson is we will see how to expose the Lambda function we just created as a web service. For that, we will use API Gateway. So see you soon.